Thank you. <laughs> so this works, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, intro would be, I thought I had 20 minutes for the presentation. I got 12. And I have a lot of slides, so I will try to just give you as much as possible. So I'm not going to do much intro. How many people know Hotjar? That's 30%. That's good. Uh, and actually, I was looking today. Uh, Really nice to be in Finland, and it's not a, it's a small market for us, but I think we have 10,000 companies in this country who signed up for us. Uh, and uh, it actually is the most, uh, in a SaaS world, it's the highest uh, LTV in the world, like Finland, Sweden, Norway, UK probably, but it's, yeah, you, ha you are the best customers we have, uh, without a doubt. So. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about, like I said, I did not, I've done this before. i uh, grown a few, like at least one company before to the same size and beyond. Uh, but with Hotjar, we did it much, much faster. Uh, I think the last time we took four years or five years. Uh, and obviously, the, the, the thing is we learned from that and then we utilize the same thing again. So what did we do? Uh, to do that in that amount of time, which is kind of impressive, or we think at least. So the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway I think we have from this, com I have from this company is that it's the first time we created something, or I was part of creating something that we really wanted. So we built something, instead of wanting to build something for others and like people might want to have this product, we built something we really wanted for the last 10 years. So we worked with similar tools. We uh, uh, felt the pain. And uh, the CEO uh, and other co-founder said, let's build something that we've been missing on the market for a very, very long time. So that's kind of, and I, I think a lot of people will talk about market fit in this, uh, in this uh, conference, but it's people say it, but people don't really get it. So. If you're going to build a company, you have to create something that you want. Uh, if you want it, you have probably the advantage of five years of experience versus building something that um, uh, you think someone else wants, and then you need to learn from the customers what they want from it. So uh, it's a quick quote, which I think kind of summarizes that. Build something uniquely build something that people desperately want. And it's like, it is a cash phrase, but it, it is that's the way it works, I think. So yeah, so two and a half years, uh, 10 million, uh, 12, 12 million now probably. Uh, and we went through this journey. Uh, no, like ha we had some funds. It's bootstrap, but we invested, so it's not. Yeah, question what bootstrap means, but we put in a few hundred k or uh, five hundred k in the company, and then we just bootstrapped it from there and. I think a lot of companies want to see that hockey stick growth. Uh, we wanted to grow it linear for so, so far. Uh, basically, because in the back end of growth, you have support, you have operations, and we didn't want to grow. Like, this is as fast as we wanted to grow. And we could have done, probably could have done it much faster, but uh, that kind of leads to the, for my lessons in his, in, from my previous companies, you kind of put pressure on the company too much, and then you kind of have to pay for that later on. Uh, quick, yeah, a quick <laughs> look back at how we see it. So we have the beta, free traction. We have the initial traction, 1 million. And then for us, it was like, how do we get to 10 million? And that's, we don't really focus on revenue. But uh, you have to kind of draw lands in the sand, like where are what is the next thing? And we never, we never thought about 5 million. We never thought about 7 million. It's always like how to get to 1, how to get to 10. Uh, and the next one would be how to get to 100. So it's always like these lines kind of makes a difference. Uh, so yeah, as just open up all this. So first nine months, which was beta, we basically, basically was just basically one thing. Position the product. We knew how we want to target, build the product, and that was the only thing we focused on. Like we didn't think about marketing. We didn't think about uh, 
what we knew would come later, just focused on two simple things. Uh, as soon as we exit beta, and the first traction was like one to one million, which took us six months, we basically focused mainly on operations and hiring and scaling up the paid we did from beta. Uh, and then we went to the next phase, which we're talking about today. How we got to 10 was basically keep scaling paid, scaling the uh, software, scaling the organization, uh, scaling the infrastructure more than anything to kind of keep that pace. So Hotjar today is used on uh, 400,000 websites in the world, uh, many of the biggest ones. So that was a huge challenge to scale up that and hiring. And then uh, as of now, I think actually last week we started uh, looking at pricing and was like monetization and revenue, which we didn't really care too much about at the beginning. So yeah, I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, I see marketing as an engine. So you have five pieces, exploration, low friction, efficiency, experience, and traction. So for us, like, we wanted to build that engine one piece at a time. So the first one was kind of beta, creating the wave, creating that first, uh, the first traction, you can say it. And we built a product we knew. Uh, we knew the audience, so we basically started out going after the places we went to to look for problems. We knew those places, so we just used those like really niche uh, areas to find our first customers. Uh, and that kind of led us to, that was a beta program for seven months, so we got 22,000 sites joining, 18,000 companies, uh, and then yeah, all the data uh, around that. And what we felt early on, I'm not going to stick on this too much, but I've been involved in a lot of companies. I invested, I built them. And what we felt with Hotjar was as soon as we went into beta, we didn't have to push. Like, it was no pushing. It was 90% organic. As soon as we did a campaign, we, we got one user, and then they gave us another 10. Uh, and I think this is really, really important for startups. Like, if you, have, if you, have, if you feel the push, like you have to push something uphill, Either you pivot or you rebuild, or it's not going to work. Uh, that's, my, uh, that's my experience. If it's a market fit, it is going to be obvious uh, it, from day one. So that's kind of led us into proving our point. This is the competition. Like We saw that took off and became the most of brand. So yeah, uh, create the demand early, confirmed market fit, uh, position yourself knowing that we knew our customers and built that wave that then led into the next phase. Uh, next one would be the other thing, which I think a lot of people get wrong, is people want to build, people have vision. It's a complex product. We, this is what we're going to do in 10 years. Uh, and they tend to build that uh, early on. So they want to build the complete. And everyone speaks about MVPs. And everyone speaks about go to market. But uh, we still see in a lot of companies, people building too much too f fast, uh, too early. So our approach was always make everything simple, make sign up simple, make pricing a no-brainer. Even though we're now paying for that mis not, not mistake, we're paying for that now. We had to fix pricing because we just gave everything away too too cheap or too uh, in, in a lot of times for free. Uh, and uh, this is like. Don't build that complex tool. Build a simple one, and then you figure out the rest on the way. And this is an uh, old competition from us. All the features in the world. And we uh, decided, yes, don't do any features. Just do the bare minimum, and then we'll fix it uh, later on. And then the last part of that is then you have a lot of customers saying, we want that, we want X, we want Z, we want A. And we always communicated through our public roadmap Exactly, this is, will happen, but it might take a year, it might take two years. Uh, so yeah, so that's like no barriers, simple, transparent, and then you have a lifetime to figure out all the, all the rest. Last part, uh, I'm going to run a little bit of time here, I think now, uh, is once you have these two things, you have the traction, like the, the, uh, the wave, and you have simplicity, then we focus on efficiency. So. Basically, so it's the same thing. Like this, uh, it, this is our go-to-market strategy. Like there's nothing outside of this that we did to succeed. So 
we started with Facebook because we, then we could target people we knew. So in our case, it was like designers or UX people or developers. And it's very cheap and it's extremely focused on the market or niches. Uh, so that's been running since day one until today. Uh, then early on, we, like the email I showed before, we emailed a lot of communities or work with forums or kind of UX uh, conferences, uh, you name it. And that was super efficient because it was cheap and it was so focused. So we spent the last year doing that. And uh, we're still doing it, but uh, we, don't, we kind of took it away because it's not, it wasn't scalable, but it was, it was the easiest way to go to market. Uh, and now lately, Google came in, content is coming up. Uh, and I know a lot of people start content too early, because if you don't have an audience, content is kind of uh, a bit waste. Uh, and organic, obviously. We, we created the product people wanted, so organic came from day one. So every new sign up or every new customer gave us another two, three, or four. Uh, and then efficiency, you measure. so. We always look, this is one KPI, we have a, a lot of them. As long as you know what you're looking at, like it's, we knew if we spend one dollar, we get four back within four months. As long as that was the case, so this is like the earn back time versus uh, LTV or CAC. As long as we keep within these things, we can, we can expand as much as we want. Um, if we go outside of them, you need to kind of refigure or re-optimize. So yeah, that led us to the next growth curve. So the last one ended there. Then we kept going after that. Uh, so few channels we knew really well. Efficiency, measured it, and then kept on scaling until, yeah, until the numbers didn't work, and then we redid it. Organic engine. I think I had a conversation this morning with someone about like how do you create that uh, viral part or product and problem I think the problem is it's hard to make it up like you cannot create something that you you can't make it up you have to be something logical behind it uh, our product we had analytics which is the back end and we have feedback which is kind of facing users so we had luxury I think everyone has the viral potential but we had luxury of our 3000 sites is showing these polls to the users and then so we have the ability to then um, present them with a Hotjar brand, not using Hotjar yet. Uh, we built a referral program to get users, to get other users, and then they get a free lifetime account or hoodies or whatever. Uh, we had a lot, a lot of our users are, are uh, consultants, so we supported them a lot. So they probably been hundreds or yeah, maybe thousands of speeches. Uh, on these conferences mentioning Hotjar, not from us, but from our, from our users or core consultants. So yeah, so summarize that, use, everyone has to find their own, like find your leverage uh, for uh, referrals. Uh, it's not easy and we're still struggling, like what's the next phase for us. Uh, incentivize it, work with them, give away whatever you can give away. Uh, and then obviously create the product people love, and then they will share it, and they will spread on its own. Last piece, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. Uh, and it ties into internal, external. So we have, uh, obviously, have all the users support, so give them, they are the reason we are here today. So uh, our CEO wrote this, I think. He said, our users are gods, um, but it's, that's how we see it. Like, there's no. There's no business without them. Uh, the customer is not always right, but uh, they have to feel that way, and you have to listen to them and, and give them what they want. But even internally, like we are, uh, everything we do we share. So this is uh, even even here. Like this is our one-page doc of uh, the next three years. What the project we're working on, what's there, our core target profitability. Everyone in the company. Uh, or everyone outside always have access to financials. So whatever we're spending, what the salaries, full transparency, because that's how we think uh, you get people engaged. Uh, and we, are, we actually are a remote company. I don't know how, how we're on time. You, you can just continue, but we will take time of the Q&A then. Okay. Right. Uh, 
No, so we are remote companies. We are 50 people now in 14 countries, and we spend a lot of resources making that something people want. So twice a year, we fly to a remote destination. Uh, I think it was Marbella, and then we're going to Chamonix now in a few weeks. Uh, and then another three, four times a year, every team meets up, whatever you want to do it in the world. And basically, you want to cr for us, I think, it's like you want to create a home for people. And people come and people leave, but uh, a lot, I, I, I don't know, we, we've seen it being done the, the wrong way in a, in a lot of uh, examples. But uh, treat your team the way you want to treat your customers. So invest in experience for users, for employees, for yourself. Uh, make it fun. Um, yeah, last last piece, uh, so like a final thought, like how we see growth compared to, we probably met a lot of investors now, and we have we we've been speaking to investors even though we bootstrapped, and everyone talks like what is competition, what is the market size, and so on. And the way we see it is, so that's hot your today. Uh, if we would do a market sizing experiment based on like what investors say, we probably have hundred times of potential growth. And uh, the yellow, yellow line there is the, um, the competition. That's, without knowing the numbers, that's pretty much wo what it is. We think, uh, I think the world is like open blue ocean. Like there's infinite amount of opportunities. And our base of data, like how much could we grow if we got 10 million websites using Hotjar on all the traffic, uh, then that would mean 5,000 times of growth for us at least, uh, which would be Apple. And that's not going to happen, but I think it's really important to think we're never going to go after a competition, do that, or competitor do that. Go after the 99% of the market that you're not comp like, that doesn't use a competitor. Like there's, there's, the, there's this infinite amount of growth uh, in a lot of areas, not all. CRMs or other tools are maybe more saturated, but uh, Generally, whenever I speak to someone in today's world with SaaS just starting out like two, a few years ago, there's, you don't have to compete. You can uh, aim for something much, much, much bigger, which makes things fun and much more uh, low cost as well. So yeah, I think that's kind of as fast, much as I can do. And then uh, on our blog, if you want to look at that, we, we've been summarizing the story like one, two, uh, or the beta program. Uh, we summarized what I showed now in much more detail. Everything we did, every single campaign we ran. Then we did another one, which was one to one million, and we showed these are all the numbers. There's all financials. This is how much we invested. This is the campaigns we ran. This is what we did internally. So if you want to get much more kind of um, into the details or nitty gritty of this, that's available. So. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much, Johan, co-founder of Hotjar. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. And before we dive into the questions, and we probably only have time for two, uh, maximum three, um, after this talk, there is no blank spot like in your app. Uh, we have Kalle Frese, one of Finland's most uh, famous young entrepreneurs, on stage after Johan. All right. So Hotjar better than Mixed Panel. Uh, mm, mm, yeah, not. Uh, we don't do the same things. Mixed panelists are event tracking. Uh, uh, we use them, so we are a mixed panel customer. Um, we might go there someday, but uh, yeah, it's not the same thing. Uh, how do you see competition? Yeah, how, how important was the referral program? Uh, early on, I think it kind of was everything. So before you went commercial, we have no budgets. We have limited amount of money. We were burning burning cash, so spending money and getting a sign up, it was extremely important to get that to deliver more value. So uh, I think the first year, it was probably 50% or more of our growth, or yeah, probably even beyond that. Uh, today, two years past, it's not as important anymore, because now when you get to a certain size, you have much more kind of power or muscles to actually pay for the same same thing you get out of it. But I think referral program as designed, we worked re really well early. Uh, today, it's, 
we're still living on the fact that people like the product and keep spreading it. Uh, how did Rosic place? Yeah, a quick one for that would be if you create a product people like, they will refer you, like no, no matter what. Uh, you can make it easier, you can give incentivize them, but if you don't like the product, it's not going to happen. And even without a referral program, if people like it, they're going to spread it. If you can start again, we'll do differently. Um, and uh, I think, thank you, yeah, Johan. I think we're like a run out of time. So let's give a big That's hand fine. for Johan. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.